for an end to hair discrimination at work and in schools continue to grow around the U.S. Just this week, a high school student out of North Carolina says she was forced to either cut her hair or sit out the rest of her softball game. Nicole Piles told local news stations she was playing in a game when umpires told her that her hairstyle violated policies. Piles was wearing knotless braids with beads on the ends. She says umpires forced her to take out the beads. It's this story and several others that have many calling for legislation to end discrimination based on hair texture or style, which mainly affects black people. Tonight's guest um, has done a lot of work in Texas to push the Crown Act, which stands for creating a respectful and open world for natural hair. WFAA Dallas anchor and reporter Tashara Parker has used her platform to share stories on those impacted by hair discrimination. Tashara, thank you so much for coming on the show. First and foremost, Jody, thank you <laughs> for having me on your show. Absolutely uh, elated to be here and happy that uh, I can share the stage with you and your, your brilliance because we need to see it and we need to hear it. Absolutely, sis. All right, so you went viral last year. This, of course, wasn't the first time you've worn your hair natural, but it really resonated with so many who appreciated how you represented um, more than 1,000 comments, 9,000 retweets, and 48,000 likes. How did that make you feel? Well, you know what? You know, it was interesting because that was supposed to be a negative situation, and I feel like we kind of flipped it on its head and made it something positive. Because what folks don't realize is, at the very beginning, we actually received a lot of negative feedback, a lot of negative commentary in regards to that particular hairstyle. People saying that it was mm -hmm. unprofessional, it's a party hairstyle, something that you should wear to work. And so, you know, it, it was eye-opening to receive that type of feedback after I addressed the critics people basically sharing their stories with me about things that they have went through. Um, it led to the creation of, of the bun ministry, so to speak. And so, you know, it, it was a good feeling to know that I had that type of support because I think as black women, a lot of times we internalize and compartmentalize a lot of the things that happen to us, a lot of the things that are said to us. And in this business, as a broadcast journalist, you know, you're trained to just deal with it, to just take it, take it, take it every time it happens. So to get that type of support after those individuals said what they what they said about that hairstyle, it was incredible. Right. So you mentioned that there were a few that said that the hairstyle wasn't professional, which you replied to with, well, who determines what's professional these days? Would you say that that was the beginning of your journey to getting legislation passed? Big time. I didn't know it at the time. In fact, you know, I didn't get really involved with the Crown Act until early 2002. 21 uh, this year. And so really what ended up happening, Yogi, is I started receiving so many emails, so many messages from viewers, from supporters, people telling me, hey, I've experienced similar things, whether it's actual blatant hair discrimination, black hair discrimination, or their own microaggressions in the workplace. And so as it relates to the Crown Act, I actually started a series at my station, ABC Dallas, it's called Rooted, and basically that's a transgenerational look at black hair. And my goal with that, as it relates to the Crown Act, was simply to amplify the conversation surrounding the Crown Act so that people couldn't look back and, and, and they couldn't look back and say, oh, well, we didn't know that this was happening. We didn't know that this was a thing. And so I wanted to put faces behind the Crown Act so people could actually see who is being impacted day in and day out. You can't say, oh, well, this just happens every now and again. No, this is happening across the, the country, across the state of Texas. And by the way, our series, it wasn't just airing in the Dallas-Fort Worth market. This series was airing, you know, in, in different regions across Texas. So quite a few people mm -hmm. got to see this series and it resonated with quite a few people as well. Now you've experienced hair discrimination before. Can you share with our viewers some of those experiences? Yeah, so I mean, I have viewers all the time write in and say certain things, but directly one of the situations I remember is I was on the anchor desk and, and at a previous station, not at WFAA, I was on anchor desk at a previous station and I received a text message and that text message basically said, don't ever wear your hair like that again. And it was a natural hairstyle. And you know, that hurt me to my core. I, I didn't even uh, finish the show that particular evening because I was literally crying because I couldn't believe that I had uh, received that message. And of course, you know, in the broadcast journalism industry, you always looking at your phone, breaking news, whatever the case may be. And so I ended up seeing that message right before our last commercial break. And it just, it just shook me to my core that someone 
would have the audacity to say that about about mm -hmm. someone's hair. So yeah, that was one of the situations that stands out the most. But you know, folks have always had something to say about me rocking my natural hair on TV. Now, you've done a lot of work telling the stories of those affected by hair discrimination. You broke the story mm -hmm. on Dakari Davis. Why are you so compelled to tell these stories? Well, you know, I think people need to see it. I think, as I mentioned earlier, Yogi, that people need to know that this stuff is still happening. It's sad that in 2021, the year of 2021, May of this year, that we're still having this conversation and it's a necessary conversation. And, you know, I feel compelled to tell it because I was giving this platform. Of course, I went viral for that hairstyle. I didn't want this platform to go to waste. Right. I feel like a lot of times people have these platforms. They don't use it for any good reason. I wanted my platform to be used for something that was going to uplift and something that was going to help the next person, the next generation, which lawmakers in Texas could have helped the next generation as well. But you know how that turned out in, in Texas. And I'm sure we'll get to that with the Crown Act. But yeah, you know, I just wanted to uplift people. I wanted to make sure that I could share their stories. The story that you just mentioned Jakari Davis is a police officer here in Dallas, and he basically wore a, a braided hairstyle, a cornrow hairstyle, straight to the back, and he was told that that particular cornrow hairstyle was unapproved and unprofessional. These were through open records request documents that I got about his situation, and I couldn't believe what I was reading about what had happened to him in the workplace. He ended up uh, overall getting all of that stuff for Santa Cruz back on the job now, but it sucks that he even had to go through that, you know, over a year's time just because he uh, he wore that particular hairstyle. They even had a recommendation for termination as part of those documents because he was insubordinate for, for wearing the hairstyle a second time after he was told not to do so. So, you know, it's just interesting. And I want people to see the faces behind those stories. And I want them to know that this is something that is still happening. That's the bottom line. It was simple. Mm-hmm. Well, last week, you know, I shared um, on social media posts from women about their experiences with hair discrimination. The, the recurring theme is women feel that they have to change their hair to fit in at the workplace. What do you say to those that deem natural hair unprofessional? Well, first, let me just say this, you know, deep. again, the Crown Act did not make it out of the house. Uh, here in Texas, you know, I can't imagine how it must feel to have the power to impact generations to come and do nothing. You know, let's not pretend that we're asking for something that's wildly unheard of, something that's out of this world. You know, we're here trying to exist naturally, fully. That's actually how I started off my testimony yeah. when I was asked to testify uh, in front of the State Affairs Committee on behalf of House Bill 392, the Crown Act here in Texas. And so I say to those people, look, we're not asking for anything crazy. All we wanna do is show up to work every single day, show up to school every single day, and just do the work or the job that we have been called to do, that we have been hired to do. And it's unfortunate that we still have to have this conversation about showing up fully as ourselves. You know, studies have shown, you know, deep, uh, one that was done back in 2019, that we actually do better work, people do better work when they can show up authentically, fully, day in and day out to, to do whatever job they've been called to do. And if your bottom line is money in any business, hey, you, you gonna get all the money if you let us just show up and do what we do uh, in our natural state. And so the same thing applies to school. You know, our kids shouldn't have to go to school and, and be worried about their hair, hairstyles. I did a story with this family out in Central Texas. This woman, her name is Hope Kozar. Her son actually wore a, a, a top knot and he had been in uh, suspension several days simply for wearing a braided top knot to school. They were taking this young man out of class for several days and put him in in-school suspension because of, because of his hair. Well, you know what, Tashara, I'm, I'm just so very proud um, of you for the work you're doing um, to create change for the betterment of us all. So I'm so thankful for you. I appreciate you um, and continue to do the work, um, sis. We see you. <laughs> Thank you, Yodid. I see you too. All right.